Hey, it's Lauren. Thank you so much for listening to The Afterlight. Enjoy the episode. This episode's been brought to you by the Raw Raw Spirit Team. Growing your business is just the beginning. Too many business owners try to grow their business on their own. They spend countless hours testing out and investing in hundreds of strategies, all with the aim of building their business. Without support, someone helping to guide you and cheering you on, motivation starts to go down, your passion starts to decrease, you start running out of money and losing faith in your business and yourself. The Raw Raw Spirit team is a supportive community filled with expert programming, up-to-date training, guest experts, mentorship, and like-minded business owners. This isn't another community and another strategy. This is a serious and supportive community of business owners focused on supporting each other and building their business. You are welcome here. All right, welcome to the show. My guest today is Shay Key, and as an interview skills coach for spirituality-minded women, Shay helps you attract professional opportunities that you enjoy. Her blend of practical and intuitive strategies will help you learn how to interview in a way that feels authentic and gets results. Yes. What if you knew how to align your mindset, your body language, and energy with your message of professional value so you could shine in the hot seat every time? We will explore exactly this in our conversation. And just imagine how limitless your future at work will be because you chose to upgrade your interview skills. I'm going to be talking with Shay all about that, including a signature method that she has created. So she's joining me now, and uh, let's get into it, girl. Welcome to the show. I'm really, really grateful to connect with you. Me too. You know, I love when I talk to people of different backgrounds and different perspectives on life, because I think that's what it's about. It's about knowing that, you know, it's not my way or the highway, it's not your way. It's kind of like when people create their own methodology based on their own life experiences. It's so fascinating to see how that kind of started. So can we kind of go into how your journey began and what is an interview skills coach? Is it exactly <laughs> what it sounds like <laughs> or more? I love that question and yes and yes. <laughs> um, yes. I interview skills coach definitely is helping someone prepare to feel as as at ease and as confident as they can under pressure. I do it in a way that uses a lot of holistic methods and I can't say it's really mainstream yet, but I'm all right with that. <laughs> I love how I do it and why I do it. Yeah, and I think good. your original question of how it came to be kind of sort of started with me getting slammed by a suburban truck um, back in 2001. And I wow. think that was a, def yeah, <laughs> that was the universe, not just giving me a breadcrumb or a billboard, but <laughs> a whole enchilada right in my wow. face. That gave me goosebumps when you said that. And, and it's, it was back in 2001. So I've had a lot of time to heal and recover. It was a terrible accident. Um, and, uh, I think though, for me and looking back at something that happened so long ago, that actually started my path of towards the spiritual path. Um, that really helped me be able to infuse all these different methods and things I do with clients to help them really feel more authentic about their message and really be able to share that with others. Mm. And I even remember um, just kind of waking up from, well, first of all, where did that truck come from, right? Yeah. <laughs> where did that truck come from? Where did that truck come from? <laughs> um, I, on my way to what I thought was my dream job, I uh, was going to be a youth employment specialist um, working in public service. And it started out great the first month. It was, it was really what I thought I was aligned with. And on my way to meet my team at a conference, actually, we're going to meet at the building that... Uh, I worked in every day at the big government center and literally just, you know, trying to make a left turn, a woman in a huge red truck, a uh, white truck. And I had a really tiny blue Toyota Giselle. I don't know if you remember those. Yes. <laughs> really, really, really tiny. Tiny. yes. 
<laughs> like a tin can car, basically. Right. I didn't even know what a suburban was back then. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, do I know it now. Um, and just, you know, just totally missed the light and, and blew through me. And fortunately, again, I, I was not as aware of spiritual guides as I am now, but somebody, a witness was nearby and saw everything that happened and, you know, very, very long, painful story short. Um, just because again, I, it's a milestone of why I'm here, but it's not why I do what I do. It's just, I can see kind of where the spiritual part came into play. Um, with that accident, I think it really started to change my world when I was put into, um, I had a lot of burns and, and broken things and put to the hospital. And at the time, he's my husband now, for many years now, but at the time I was just getting to know my boyfriend's family. And these amazing elder ladies from Vietnam, apparently his aunts who I hadn't really met before, walked into my hospital room and they didn't say anything other than, can we, do you mind if we put or he translated for them. Do you mind if we put my hands on uh, around you to help you feel better? I had no idea what that was about, but I, I was, you know, all for getting out of this burn unit and get, do, what you, do whatever you need to. And there was already a sense of trust, obviously, because, yeah. um, you know, I was really um, in love with him. And uh, so you know, I said yes. And apparently what they were showing me for my first time was Reiki. And I could just feel this amazing light, this amazing warmth, um, just this grace and this love and just this, I, again, I get goosebumps when I, when I think about that moment. Um, it just was kind of the gateway of helping me understand, okay, I, I know I've you know, gone to, to a lot of college, I've done a lot of training, I've done all the head academic stuff, but this yes. really was really my first whoa <laughs> into there's something really higher out there there's something universal to connect with um so from then wow. on i just you know we started studying that and then i started studying yoga meditated with monks at a monastery i mean i did so many things to explore different ways to connect to that healing force because i know for sure and my traditional doctors at the time said for sure i don't know what it is else you're doing but you're recovering way quickly from your traumatic brain injury, your, <laughs> your bruises, your, you know, uh, burns, scars, every, you know, the surgeries they had to do to get glass out of my face. You're recovering from all these things wow. way quicker than, than we thought um, that po possible than we expected. I was back at work probably way quicker than I should have been too, <laughs> looking back. Um, so all of that just kind of, you know, put me on this path where at work in government, I was one person you know, doing all the things and achieving a lot of outer success, moving up from being an employment specialist to then managing career centers, then managing teams of employment specialists, you know, then training them on how to help people find jobs and find work that they like to do. But on the behind the scenes of all that work, I was doing all these things that were making me really feel connected and healed and part of the universal force but in my day to day, it wasn't all coming together. Right. And so there was like a separation uh, between the two yeah. identities. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's funny. Cause I think that, you know, like when you're a spiritual thinker and a spiritual person, we're still living the human experience. And frankly, a lot of people, you know, I, I couldn't say to many people, some of the things I could say to you, you know, in relation mm. to this stuff, right? Talking about angels and telling you maybe an angel experience I had recently or learning about fairies, you know, things like that. Other people would just look and think that that's fantasy. And I think it's, it's definitely a challenge with understanding how to blend the two together, especially when, you know, we are spiritual beings living the human experience and we're needing to mm. You know, we want to make money so we can have a quality life, so we can give back to the people around us, blah, blah, blah. But then how do you kind of meld those two together? I, I do want to get into that conversation a yeah. little bit later with you, because I know that one of the things that you do do is you, and I mentioned it off the top of the show, is you align mindset and body language and energy. Mm -hmm. But I guess yes. I, I can't help but want to delve in just slightly deeper to your experience. Would you kind of consider that to be a near-death experience? Because you sort of have summed it up in a very casual way. Yes. I go back to it, how, I, how I remember that. I'm like, that's 19 years. That's like, that was a long time ago. <laughs> 
um, but it's, I, and I think even a minor accident can, depending on where we're at in life, can have a really big effect on us. So I hear you on yeah. that. What did you learn from that experience? That was the problem, Lauren. I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you like, okay. I stayed. I stayed where I was and uh, you know, did all these other things on the side and it was never, you know, I had all this outer success I felt, um, and seemed happy and had the great salary and had the right. benefits and, and then I started a family, which you know, is such a blessing. But when you're juggling all that and it's not really cohesive, you don't really have that or for me, I didn't really have it just felt like I was juggling so many things. I didn't really, I didn't really get how it all got together. Right. So, but it still yeah. sounds like you were still exploring the concepts, mm -hmm. like you were still, so it, it I, I guess from an outside's perspective, it sort of does seem that you were still like maybe something that you did learn from that experience was that there's a, another world that's available yes. to you. Unfortunately, it was health issues. I think uh, definitely towards the, um, I did uh, resign from the world of work and public service, and I remember how how hard that was to do. I had, you know, built up all this reputation, built up really what I felt was a family there, um, and seeing kind of a, a lot of like management changes and things getting more toxic. and And I knew I I had decided probably you know six or seven years ago that hey, you know, when I'm working with all these employers and doing all these employment fairs and, you know, walking through these centers where, you know, thousands of people are coming in every day to the to ones we were managing and seeing how much they still aren't getting to the opportunities they want, how broken, how biased, how outdated the systems are for them to get where they want to go. Yeah. Um, that was all really building up inside. And then at a certain point, again, I, was, <laughs> I, I do I do tell the universe now, please send me breadcrumbs and billboards. I don't need any more slamming, but yeah. I get slammed again. <laughs> oh, um, something, something called shingles, um, oh, wow. which, you know, really, really is not a disease I wish on anyone. Um, but it really is a immune system issue. And, you know, it's a virus and it's really, I think, happened to me because I was getting so worn down and burned out, but also because I wasn't listening. And I know this now, but did not know it then. <laughs> 2014, I, I, I was starting to, it was starting to click um, <laughs> that, that, hey, you can't keep being two people. You can't keep, you got to bring all this together somehow. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's when I started to realize, okay, we need so much more than the traditional methods to try and get where we want to go in our career. We need, you know, so much more than to rely on these broken systems, you know, recruiters that don't always have our best interest at heart. Um, even the media system that you and I sometimes are in with just trying to promote ourselves that has a lot of yeah. different hoops and different things kind of put up to, to block certain certain paths, um, you know, from you, you getting to where you want to go. And again, it's just blending it more with holistic method, uh, is, is really where, you know, I've noticed that when I follow the steps that have worked for me and now I share them with others, it just makes it go so much more smoother and so yeah. much more fun. Yeah. But geez, what a, <laughs> what a lot to have to go through to, to get to that point. And so yeah. that's kind of part of why I stay on the journey is maybe so other people don't have to, they can get it sooner. Yeah, that's so cool. I remember I was listening to an interview with Evan Carmichael. I don't know if you've ever seen, he mm -hmm. does all those YouTube videos and he's like the top 10, you know, Oprah success things. Anyway, he mm -hmm. was talking about how, you know, if you don't know what to do with your life, think about a time when you overcame adversity and teach people to do that. And that's kind of what you're doing. It sounds like is you've kind of gone through the hard yards a couple of times. You've mm -hmm. understood that maybe there are maybe more graceful ways of learning. Your <laughs> I love that. Graceful. That's, that's actually one of the things that I put out in the universe sometimes is I go, Hey, if I'm meant to do this, please show me gracefully. And if not, please show me gracefully. And I don't know where I learned that. I definitely learned that years ago, whether it was from a person or a book, but it was essentially I love that. Now, kind of like what you were saying though, with your breadcrumbs where you're going, I don't need to be, you know, really forcefully hit anymore. I can just be gently guided. But I think that, you know, when you realize that you're a creator 
uh, yes. that you can kind of set that intention, which I think is important to reiterate. So, you know, when I'm listening to you speak, it's obvious that you have a mission and it's obvious that now you're listening to it. It might have taken some time, but you might not have been ready if you hadn't heard the the calling before now. So, you know, I know that you're an interview skills coach. We're going to get into that. I do, you know, have to kind of ask the question though, have you always been a confident speaker? Because when I'm speaking to you, you do speak with that eloquence and that grace, and you do seem to understand how to formulate your sentences. Was that always a natural thing for you to do? I love that. Yeah, no. (laughs) It still isn't. Let me tell you about the 20 different things I did just to be able to do some of that with you. Okay. And I'm not going to go through the list, but even though, and, and I think that's important to remember just for a lot of the people that we see in TED Talks or that we see um, you know, Beyonce performing in front of millions, you know, just what is all the things, you know, she has this whole alter ego she creates called Sasha Fierce that she kind of pulls into to kind of garner all that confidence. And so for me, I just had to figure out what were some of the the routines and rituals and and things that helped me get past all the fears. Um, I think it's why I work really well with highly sensitive people, empaths, introverts, people with social anxiety, people with really any anxieties. (laughs) Um, Because I've been there, I have all those things. I, I actually, um, I know I'll probably take a two hour bath after talking with you just to kind of let it all go. <laughs> I hear that girl. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. won't. I've trained myself not to overanalyze. However, this goes, I'm going to choose, you know, two things that, you know, ways I shined and two ways I'll, I'll grow from it. But that all took oh, so okay. many hits and, and, and lessons learned along the way. It was, it was not natural. Now I can confess that I definitely have always been very interested in communication. It was my major in college and then I got a master's in counseling. So how people relate to each other and how they share their message with each other has always fascinated me. So I don't know if that's a leg up, <laughs> but I also have on the other side all these other things that want to block it. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I think sometimes we get in our own way. And I think that when you have a mission, you know, whatever your mission is, great or small, I mean, we're not judging anything. We're just saying that when you have a purpose or, or something that needs to be said, you know, sometimes we have to work through fear. We have to decide that, you know, we're going to stand up and be courageous and vulnerable and brave. And, you know, sometimes that's easy to do. And, and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's easier to do depending on the stage of life you're in, I guess. Yes. Yes. And just yeah. uh, the recent stage we were in, fortunately, was taking a very overdue vacation. And um, I think we we're sharing emails back and forth. And I was telling you, we're finally getting to the beach because I've learned I break if I do not have a lot of self care. And learning that the hard way was no fun. Yes. And so, again, I just I infuse a lot of that into my coaching. I, I still make sure the like, clients and students I work with are getting, you know, the nuts and bolts and the mechanics of communication that need to be there, especially because a lot of times I see people from different cultures or mixed backgrounds. And some of the standard things are, are different depending on what opportunity you're going for and you know, what international, if it's an international experience or if you're coming from an international experience. So, you know, we do those things, but I think again and again, what matters most is helping someone learn what's going to work for them to stay aligned kind of to like what you were saying to that inner being, that higher self and everything else follows. The ease follows, the comfort with what you're going to say follows, and then the confidence is exuded but it takes that inner work and that outer practice to make that happen. Yeah, totally. So, you know, as an interview skills coach, I guess when I hear that, I think off the top that you help people in interviews, like for podcasts and things like that. But Mm -hmm. I would imagine that your work is also a bit deeper because in a way, when you Mm -hmm. understand how to be a good interview and communicate, what you're also teaching people to do is to, do a really successful maybe elevator pitch like where they can actually explain what they do to people in an eloquent way that you know they feel comfortable with being authentic 
you know, with what they're saying or, yes. you know, is part of what you're doing as well, just having a general conversation at a party and being able to express that? Or does it all have to do with interviewing and media and maybe even some live video, for example? I love that uh, you asked that. For me right now, I think all those things I feel I have the skills to help people with, but I'm getting the most satisfaction out of either helping people that kind of know where they already are at and they want to get better at communicating that message and they know kind of where they're going next. Um, and also those that might not have had all the resources as, as well before. I, I have a project coming up working with youth in foster care. That population always, always just stirs my soul. I've done a lot of work um, with youth in coming out of the system or in that system. Um, and in our country, it's, it's really got a long way to go to get better. Um, and so again, I think I even see with someone, you know, in that situation to someone that, you know, is in a situation where, you know, they have had more resources and more privileges. What's so fascinating to me is no matter what end of the spectrum someone's on, they can upgrade, they can get better at it. And that's where the fun is for me. It's figuring that out with them. Do you think that, you know, as a spiritual person, do you think that it's possible to integrate, you know, your thoughts and your, um, your different ideas into the business world? Because you did talk about working with intuitives, working with empaths, mm -hmm. you know, working, I'm sure you're working with people of different modalities, but I mean, we are also living in kind of a yang world, I guess you could say more of a masculine driven world where, you know, maybe the kind of softer side of the spirituality or the, the feminine divine feminine or the yin or however you want to explain it, it has a harder time kind of coming in. So do you think you can incorporate the two and still be accessible to people that might not really be down with this kind of conversation? <laughs> well, living outside of Washington, DC, <laughs> I feel you on that middle yeah. energy. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and, and, and for me, uh, again, I, I, I love how kind of interactive and more um, authentic platforms like LinkedIn are actually becoming because you're right, not everyone is going to want to know a holistic approach and how they can really tap in so they can turn on better out to the world and share their message, whether they're interviewing, you know, for an IT job or trying to get into a new industry or returning back to work after being the one of the most important jobs in the world, a mom for over a decade or anything like that. Some people don't want to do that. They just want to, you know, I, I call it, they prefer a boot camp style. <laughs> like just give it to me, give it to me straight, give it to me and, and let me move forward. And that works for some people. And that's, you know, I network that I have now, I can say, hey, you know, you and I might not be a great fit, but this person over here, you know, here's their profile on LinkedIn, see if that matches for you. Mm -hmm. There's just some really great people I've met in the process. And what I love is that we collaborate. Um, you know, they, they learn some of the, what I call, embrace your woo-woo for more win-win <laughs> nice. things that I do. And they keep my finger on the pulse about what the industry is doing and, and where the jobs are and where the opportunities are or, you know, how to help people make sure that, like you said, they can, I don't like the word pitch as much, but share uh, their professional yeah. value in a situation where they're trying to get angel investors or they're trying to get, you know, but there's amazing people that, you know, also do very similar things and they have their own styles. So I just love meeting people so that I can be able to help people get to their next step, whether that's working with me or someone else. I guess too, sometimes when you're working in the business world, you know, for me, I, I um, my alter ego is also not my alter ego. I guess this is kind of my alter ego in a way. You're Sasha Fierce. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's like business world stuff. And while I do integrate, you know, the way that I look at the world in a spiritual way through mindset and, and energy, which we're going to get into that conversation in just a minute, I guess I do feel that if you're not in line with what I'm about, then we're not going to be the right fit, which is what you're saying. Exactly. That's absolutely okay. This yes. is how I live my life. And so I know that it works. I know that it keeps me in a state of flow and yeah, I, I won't be able to help you properly if you're not at least open to considering that 
you're responsible right. for your life or, you know, whatever, whatever the issue. It's a big reason I make a lot of free content because, yeah. you know, even if there's just a morsel of, of what I have that someone can value from and then move into their next experience, particularly if they're a woman, because again, I think that's the population for me. Part of it's because I have a daughter following me and I just know how unequal things are in the world of work. Like you said, that, mm. you know, we've experienced where there is a lot of that male energy and nothing against male energy because we need that balance. Yeah, for sure. But there definitely is a lot that needs to be turned. <laughs> and so, uh, mm. you know, just being able to um, help, help more people, especially women have that feeling that they feel anchored and supported. And so they can get into that next best career step. And also being able to deal with the ickies, the rejection, mm. the uh, imposter syndrome, the feeling like you did everything and that you prepared for it, but you're still hitting that wall. That really drives me a lot because I have seen so many people just stop and not keep going for it and settle when their gifts need to be out in the world of work. They're really, they're, they're true natural talents and skills, you know, not just what they're good at, quote unquote, but the things that light them up. If we can get more and more people aligned with that, instead of having these awful statistics, like in America, that 70% of people are not happy doing what they do, mm. you know, then I'll stop my work. <laughs> then I know I'll be done. <laughs> like, okay, I'll go be a Reiki healer now <laughs> and just do that. <laughs> or, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go teach a yoga class, but I just feel there's, there's a lot to be done to, to help more women connect to their learn how to stay connected to their best self in these tough situations, like you said, that have a lot of energy that doesn't align with what they really want to do. And they need to be able to be, get around it and pass through it to get to the other side and be able to shine. Yeah, agree. And you know, it's funny because I was just talking with someone the other day and they were in a talk, they're in a toxic environment, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying off the top, but I don't know if they feel that they're empowered to make a shift or that they can make a shift. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that when you're walking the spiritual path, and I can only speak for myself here, but I feel like things are divinely ordered. That I, mm -hmm. when I'm in a state of flow, everything just works. It's like, chick, 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 chick. it just, it all like train tracks just flows out in front of me. And I think that part of that starts with being authentic and taking responsibility for yourself. So what role does being authentic and taking responsibility for yourself play in the work that, that you do? I think as a private person, I've had to learn to be more vulnerable um, and just know that I think that's where interviews really get messed up a lot of times is people are trying so hard to fit into something that someone else, that they think someone else wants. Right. And so that authenticity speaks speaks volumes to me when, when you bring up a word like that and really understanding that that's not lip service. That's not trying to say the right thing in the right moment yeah. because that's what that other side needs to hear. But really speaking your stories and knowing what those stories are and you know, how they can be of value. And if they're not knowing how to walk away and release, um, yeah. I think that's still something I still, I still struggle with is releasing the outcome on things you know, it's like, oh, I, I saw it. I felt it. I dreamed it. I was there. I was doing all my things and, and yeah. it still doesn't work out sometimes, <sighs> you know, and just, just sharing those moments. Is you said releasing the outcome hundred percent. And it's also releasing the how, like not only the outcome, like what it looks like, but the how you're going to get there as well, <laughs> would you say? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of law of attraction and student of ACIM and just all those different things that, that help us get past that inner critic. Um, and uh, I, I agree with you that I think there needs to be like, you can become a Reiki master. Where's the release the outcome master? <laughs> like I, I want that class. Yeah. Um, but in a way though, we're taught it every day, aren't we? With all the different challenges that come up. Uh, we certainly get a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities in the school of life <laughs> to figure that out. Yeah, but it, it is, I think, the hardest thing sometimes. And also, just talking about when we've failed and we've been rejected. I mean, just think about the thousands of interviews that go on a day. 
you know, from the podcast world to, you know, the corporate world, to the nonprofit world, to government sector, people are getting rejected left and right. And not enough people are talking about it other than venting, which is so important to do to release that anger and frustration. But how do we recover from that loss? How do we transition and, and take all that negative feelings and bitterness and really valid frustration? Because as I definitely know about outdated and bias and broken systems, you know, what do we do next so that we can really move on? And uh, those are more of the conversations that I, I really value people talking about because then we get to the authentic side of it all. I guess it comes down to what you were talking about before, which is recognizing your own truth like that when, you know, maybe as an introvert or as an empath that when you're doing an interview, you need to go recover after. And, you know, you talked about self-care, that kind of word yeah. came up when you were talking about that. Those are some of my five R's. Yes. Recover is the last one. <laughs> Big R. <laughs> yeah. Have a recovery plan. And it's not to, some people are like, oh, because, you know, I have no chance or because, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best kind of thing. No, because, you know, you are sharing your professional value. And every time we do that, there's risk. And so you're going to need to recover. What's the five R's that you were talking about? Can you share that? Sure. Those are just steps that, you know, I, I try to put into bullet points so it's a little easier for someone, especially if they're feeling overwhelmed and all that interview stress, um, to just try, try and make sure that, okay, you follow these steps, you're so much more likely to shine in the hot seat. You're just going to walk away feeling more proud. The first one just really, you know, being around ritual which is not where everyone starts. So right away, I know right away if someone's like, huh? <laughs> like, if I, if I have to over explain it, then it might not be the best fit. And that's okay. Um, but uh, there, there's a lot of research and a lot of things that, that I do are, are very science-backed as well. And, and I love it when Olympians like Serena Williams, um, you know, amazing tennis pro, teaches us this you know, in, in what she does, because she has a ritual that she, she mm. does to align her energy to be a be her best in her best performance energy. And it's something with tying her shoes. So adorable. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, I love little, little things like that. When I find that out about, you know, or Adele's stage fright, like, what does she do? Because she's got one of the biggest cases of stage fright, which is, you know, slowly and surely talking more and more about. And uh, it's, it's kind of comforting to know that, you know, these other women in these really big spotlight moments have their own rituals that they do to align their energy. And so I, I work with someone to make sure that's kind of their first step before we share our energy, well, our professional value, before you start doing anything else with getting prepared for this. Do you have a ritual that really triggers relaxation and clarity mm -hmm. and calm and you know you're connected? It can be three minutes, it can be 30 seconds, but what is it that's gonna work for you? And are you gonna start practicing it consistently? So it really, I mean, science shows us if we do something consistently, it starts to trigger, you know, all those calm down, good feel chemicals. Um, so rituals that first are. Okay, what's the next star? <laughs> You're like, hmm. I like it. No, I, well, I don't, I, I guess if you want me to comment on ritual, I, I was thinking about my, I want to know yours. <laughs> I don't know if I have one necessarily. I do definitely do a ritual after, I guess, which is I cleanse my energy, cut cords, things like that. Um, yes. Yeah, so tell me more about that. So with the cutting cords, that's, that's, I call that advanced energy work right there. That's awesome. Oh yeah. And that's so, my, I'm, I'm also originally from Virginia beach. So whenever I say awesome, I'm not getting rid of that. It's a filler word, but awesome. I say awesome <laughs> Canadians. We say awesome. Cause lots of things are awesome. Uh, right. yeah. Okay. So, um, one of my previous guests, actually, she taught me about the karate chop. So that's one way I might do it. So basically you take your hands. I know our listener at home can't see me, but you kind of like you, you cross them over and you kind of chop, 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 chop. So if you're thinking a lot about a guest after, for example, you just chop, 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 and kind of create that cut. Uh, or what I'll do is I'll, Love that. I'll imagine, and it, that's actually goes for anywhere. That's Michelle Price in my conversation with her. She, she talked about that. So that's even if like, let's pretend I'm driving to get a bit of road rage or someone cuts me off. So you just do chop, 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 chop. 
sometimes I'll even just uh, meet somebody briefly and I feel like a bit, I don't know, like I just think about them in a way that they feel, I don't know, just not in a good way. So I'll just chop, chop, chop those cords. <laughs> So that's a really easy way to do it. So the karate chop. So that's one thing I might do. Uh, the other thing would be that I would actually close my eyes and I would go up to the seventh plane where the crater is. And I have like a safe space I've created there. And I basically go and I ask the creator, I just say, uh, 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 it is commanded that you remove any negative or other energy, any psychic hooks, any wayward spirits, any entities, yes. any cords, any fragments, anything like that. Remove it all, take it to the light. And then I say, it's commanded that Archangel Michael comes and cuts any cords. And I just, you Ooh, always, one of my favorites, Michael. Visual, I always visualize it happening. And then I say, take it to the light to be transformed and replaced with unconditional love and truth, balance, peace, harmony, and protection. And then I actually witness that happening and then uh, I ground and then I go about my day so that's normally what I kind of part of my ritual and then when I am not you know this morning I, I know you know I was kind of like rushing around to get some things done before I popped on with you but very often as well especially because I work in a restaurant part-time while I'm building my business and uh, I do imagine going up to the you know, the creator's light and I do protect myself in this shield where only unconditional love can enter. Cause I'm like you, I'm very sensitive. And uh, yes. as an empath, it's very difficult for me to talk to a lot of people and not feel super drained and exhausted. So I, I have to be really careful of that. Uh, yeah. And I'm a high achiever. So it's trying to balance that Yes. Side, it's uh, really tricky. So that I guess that's my ritual. So there you go. You got it out it's of me, girl. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. No, you just and you helped anyone, like you said, the you know, listener just to hear different people's ways. And the only problem would be is if someone doesn't have one, that you know, it can be anything as long as it's serving them and it feels like it connects them to their light, you know, yeah. and it's also that having that accountability and that someone to help you make sure you're doing that or is it time to do something different with your ritual so that you so that it feels even better because sometimes things can become too routine and you might not get that spark you know yeah. um and so I know my rituals and routines they change I you know I probably would have been a kid labeled with ADHD I, I <laughs> <laughs> have six, 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 six tabs open all the time. Yeah, um, um, and so I changed mine up. You know, it's just like me with my uh, fitness classes. I don't do the same thing all the time. I need something different every, you know, 30 to 45 days at least to stay interested. Um, so I just love that you found some things that really tune you up and, you know, get you so that you're feeling that you can go into this moment feeling authentic and steady. That's, that's a real gift. Yeah, I like that. And I like how you were talking about how your ritual can be 30 seconds or three minutes. It doesn't have to be, and you know, kind of that you can change and also that you can create something for you. So it can be a little, you know, mantra that you sing to yourself or some kind of dance move that you do before you get into it. It doesn't need to be anything as grand as maybe what I've explained that I do, but you know, I, well, I love you do can be, and what you say can be for like the big um, you know, before the interview, but then it's car it's finding those little things in that amazing routine that, that that ritual that you described and taking little things so that you can do them during the interview. It's about midway through an interview, like where we are right now, where things really start to kind of slide. Sometimes it's because there's too much comfort, sometimes there's too little, sometimes you know, people just aren't clicking, whatever it is. And so knowing how to just in 10 seconds be able to get back into the present moment and your posture will go back up and you'll feel more grounded again. One thing I love telling people to do, um, do you know a little bit about acupressure? I'm sure you do. <laughs> I do, yes, but I'm happy for you to talk about that. I don't Yeah, use one acupressure, of my favorite actually. points is that, um, I think it's called H7 in our wrist. Um, okay. More importantly, it's like a little space and either it's in both wrists, a little bit uh, towards the edge, um, kind of like where your pulse is, but go to the left, maybe about a centimeter and you'll feel kind of this almost 
empty space. It's almost like it's not solid. It's a little press there. Is it on the inside or outside of your wrist? For our Depending on what home. you're looking at. This is what's funny about because we're, we're, yeah, <laughs> we're I on guess cameras. So if you're looking uh, so if you're looking when I look at it, it's to my palm. left. <laughs> if you're looking at your palm. So if you, yeah, if you just come down about an inch and go to the left, um, there's this like space. And there's, there's, that's not really it's like a you know, like all things. We can get so caught up in the details, but just in that area a little bit to the left of your pulse and pushing down and breathing in deeply three times, that connection to that meridian and that little bit of pressure, you can do that under, like I'm doing it right now under my computer and you can't tell, except yeah. hopefully my posture is getting a little nicer, my words are slowing down a little bit, right. and my breath is becoming more even, so I can give you more of my message. And just, you know, that, and just taking little things like that from your routine or your ritual so you can do them also in the interview. I think really goes a long way to making sure, especially that second half. Yes, is that really is stellar. so key actually, because as the interviewer, I'm driving the ship. You don't know what's happening. You don't know where we're going. You don't know what journey mm -hmm. I'm going to take you on. You and you're always wanting to, you know, represent yourself in the pos in the best possible way. Sometimes when I do Facebook lives and things, when I'm talking to nobody or I'm talking to the listener at home. Uh, I actually put breath marks in. So I will Love write it. breath, 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 or slow down. I've got slow down in caps a lot. But as somebody who's being interviewed, you wouldn't have that because you're not in charge, right? So mm -hmm. I like how you're talking about having those anchor points, you know, to come yeah. back to, to remind yourself to be in the moment, be here now, and yeah, represent yourself well. That's That's really great. I love that. And for me, for does it, it does an extra boost because I also I'm like, wait, in in that language, that the that that spot is translates to spirit gate, that little spot there. I'm like, ooh, oh. <laughs> I feel ooh. the juices. And yeah. so, is that going to work for everyone? No, um, but you know, for those that you know already are familiar with a practice like that, um, I feel like I get a lot of information that crosses my path all the time from a whole lot of different modalities, and I just try and kind of you know filter it some and align it with how people can interview better and and put it you know to people as I meet them and get to know through assessment um, and really that's where the second R comes in with rediscover so some people would say research 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 you can do that before an interview I call it rediscover because a person if whatever opportunity they're going for they need to rediscover what it is they're really interested about that opportunity what that opportunity needs and how they can bring forward their professional value to solve that opportunity's problems, but also to rediscover their strengths. And we, I do that with formal assessments with people, but also just with some fun things. Um, one thing I pull out a lot, and I was going to want, wondering if you're going to participate, um, is a book about uh, numerology. And just yes. based on our day of birth, you know, we can be realigned with so many of our strengths we might have forgotten about. And so I was just wondering what day you were born. I was born March 22nd. Do you know your word already in numerology for the 22nd? No, I don't, but I know that's a master number. And uh, yeah. What's this it? book? It's so funny. I used to go all the time, um, and I'm sure I will when things are all open more again, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, you know, I love crystal stores and, and stores that, you know, have all these different holistic things. And I would go into one of my favorite local ones and I'd always be getting people's birthday cards because they had these numerology birthday cards that completely, whenever I got them and I gave them to someone, they're like, this pegs me, this is so spot on. And so then I just got an intuitive hit one day to go and find where all those came from. And then I literally in my hands right now, I think is one of the last copies of Secrets of Your Day of Birth, but it's a really skinny version written by, I don't even remember the authors. Um, there's something like it out there that's really thick and complicated, but I like this one because it's so quick and easy. And so 22 for you, I can just flip right to it tell you a little bit about your word and just see if it aligns and either okay. way it creates a conversation that you might find is something that you can put into some of your interview responses as, as you're going and talking about your business or just mm, okay oh, neat 
architect. It says you have a strong connection to your values, morally, financially, and spiritually. This deep knowing gives you the ability to help others find their sense of worth. Ooh. You have a strong code of ethics and treat people with respect and dignity. What your gifts of patience and sensitivity, you can assist others in discovering their true value. And it goes on and on. And, and I'll also talk about your challenges, what some of your top challenges are. Um, so how does that strike you? Wow. Just knowing, knowing that about you. It's funny. I think that like when I was a teenager, I always knew that my mission was to uh, help people find their power. I You're always a builder. Knew, yeah, I always knew that that was, that was my mission. And um, designer. I mean, there's so many different ways you could play yeah. that. Executive, counselor, lawyer, organizer, promoter, financier, super athlete. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I don't really think I'm a super athlete, but... <laughs> Right. Yeah. But then new, yeah. uh, numerology is also saying one of your challenges might be that you're skilled at building new words and illuminating new ways of thinking. Your clear vision and desire for instant restructuring may make it difficult for you to let others make their own discoveries at a slower pace. Pull up yes. the park bench, have a seat. While you're waiting, your active imagination will surely go on creating. That is really cool. Have you heard of the drama triangle? No, tell me. It's called the Cartman Triangle, but there's basically three points that you are um, that you need to basically keep the triangle alive. So, like to keep drama alive. So you're either the victim, or else. Oh, okay. Are, this does yeah. sound a little familiar. Yeah. Or else you're the persecutor, or mm. else you're the rescuer. And just when you were talking, that's so funny because I am a classic rescuer. Because I've done so much self work and reading and all that kind of stuff, I always seem to <laughs> know how have to the help advice people. and the guidance yes. and the tips. Yeah. Yes. But some people like you, they need to be right. hit by a truck a few times before they Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many blessings came from that, undeniably. But yeah, I wish no hitting of anyone with trucks. No, definitely not. <laughs> graceful <laughs> lessons, graceful lessons only. Shakes right. gone and, through and some the people might say, Well, what do I I'm like, what am I gonna like say my horoscope in an interview? And it's like, no, it's just getting realigned and remembering and doing that rediscovering of who you really are and there's right. so many of these amazing holistic methods that have been around for thousands of years that have some of these amazing insightful things and if it doesn't ring true about you then you know try something else and if it does ring true about you how can I add that into my responses so that some of that authenticity that you're talking about really comes into play. Some of that stuff that makes me really unique versus mm -hmm. another person that could be in that hot seat you know, in the next hour or tomorrow, how does that, you know, really come into play? And, and also still mixing it with objective assessments. I mean, I do a lot of those too. I'm a huge fan of Strengths Finder 2.0 from Gallup. I think that that is one of the most illuminating assessments out there. And that one's very formal though. And it's like a, you know, 45 minute test and, you know, but there's also other assessments like Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies, which is all about helping you to figure out how you deal with people and how you are prefer to be managed and how you, I mean, how you also want to be managed, um, or how you manage others and what your tendencies are around others, especially in the workforce. Um, you know, and so it's, I wouldn't do all these things to a person. It's just kind yeah. of taking that blend of intuitively seeing, you know, understanding, you know, what hits I get about what they need combined with that, you know, employment counselor background and knowing what the labor force is looking for and, and blending those together before, you know, we rehearse. So that's the third R, if you want to keep going down this path of the steps to shining in the hot seat. Yeah, sure. Rehearsing, rehearsing so you don't sound like a robot to the art of that. <laughs> you know, um, so I think a lot, a lot of times we're afraid to do that. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, one of the things I teach a workshop called Purposeful Leadership, okay? And in that workshop, we actually, I teach people how to say no, and we rehearse saying no. Because very often, and I'm sure this is where you were going with this before I cut you off, was no, that when you rehearse, you tend to show up the way that you want to. 
because you've practiced it, right? If we actually mm -hmm. practice saying no, or we practice yes. rediscovering who we are, our mission, and, and then mm -hmm. chances are we're going to show up like that because we've already practiced it, rehearsed it. It's so good. Absolutely. How you practice will be how you perform. And the energy, it's really the energy you bring to how you practice will be the energy that shows up to greet us when we need to be in performance, whether that's in an interview or, you know, trying to negotiate that raise, you know, whatever yes. it is, that's, that's so important. That is high stakes. Rehearsing is important, but also still staying in the moment and doing a lot of the mindfulness activities and meditation activities that I assign sometimes just because in an interview we're also often thrown off guard. And so yes. being able to come back on track um, is so important to be able to, you know, really make sure that you're representing yourself in the best way that you want to while also being real. Mm. And so you don't want to over rehearse. That's True. for sure. And I, th I think sometimes I, I know for sure, actually, that, uh, you know, we often avoid trying to hear ourselves um, recording ourselves and then playing it back can be really difficult. And so uh, this is where I come in to just really try and find the best way to help someone rehearse so that they can really see where some of the ways are that they can improve. And they can do that self-reflection without doing self-sabotage and breaking out apart and being too critical. Yes. Um, certainly yes. with high achievers that I also help um, a lot of the people, now that you said that, <laughs> have, helped, have that, which, which can be an Achilles heel, right? Yes. Um, That's so funny because when you were talking there, I, I just want to say for our listener at home, as an interviewer, I do try to find questions in general that the person hasn't been asked before because I want to hear a different response and I don't want them to get bored and kind of zone out because they're asking me this. I'm asking them the same old question. So I can tell you that that's definitely something that I look for uh, in myself to try to come up with those questions. The other thing too, is that just reiterating what you said there, when you take the time to reflect on what you're doing or what you've said, it actually allows you to become better. One of the things that I notice that I say all the time is I love that. And even though it's authentic and I do really love that and feel that if people listen to multiple episodes of mine mm -hmm. and all I say all the time is I love that, that's really tiring. So mm -hmm. it's something that I need to work on myself is rehearsing maybe different phrases of coming back. So I just wanted to share. Oh, I think you're too hard on yourself. <laughs> but if anyone's nitpicking with you because of a filler phrase like that, that you lean on, that's coming from a place of authenticity. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about it, no. but I hear you on that because no that is. is something that no I, I have to watch out for too with people is yeah. where are the, the qualifiers too, that a lot of women particularly say like, did that make sense? You know, ending your really powerful thing and then ending it with, did that make sense? Those things like that, I definitely make sure people get out of their habits. Agreed. Because it does. It, it downgrades the message. But no, we're all human and we're going to have those moments. You know, I, yeah. I do it myself. I'll, I, I'm sure I've already done it five times, like I said, with the word awesome. <laughs> and it's prioritizing. Do I work on that or do I work on making sure that I can share some stories so that people can get a sense more about what I do. And so it's prioritizing too. And so we don't get caught and stuck in that yeah. energy of feeling bad about, oh, I keep doing this the wrong way. Because then we never move forward. But I, I love what you're saying about that. I like what you're saying there. I love what you said about that. I love what you're saying. Yeah, very good. But I mean, I guess that's the thing is I don't spend a lot of time thinking about not doing that. I just go with it. And then I just noticed I said it just a minute ago. And then I went, Oh yeah, I, that's something that I was trying to maybe like be aware of and, and maybe modify. We're already ahead of the game. A lot of people don't even <laughs> notice that. <laughs> and I, I think too, sometimes a, a um, criticism like that, or a, if that was the top problem that I had with a lot of people or the top thing that I thought that would get them their next opportunity, that would be a different thing. You know, it wouldn't, I just don't think that that that's going to weigh a lot of people and I think as we get better and better those things like that will shake off and we won't do them anymore mm -hmm. um, but if we worry about them too much we won't move forward and try and, exactly. and put ourselves in new situations like you said or ask amazing creative intuitive questions which are really well known at this point for doing so that people can 
also learn a little new insight about themselves that you're talking with. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. All right. Well, let's wrap up quickly. I know the, um, the R's. Release and recovery. Yes. Okay. So let's quickly go through release and recovery. And then, because I know that we're already at our hour, believe it or not, I could talk to you. I love that. I'm just going to keep saying that the whole time. I love that. (laughs) There are a few things I wanted to talk to you about before we kind of wrapped up. So release, what is, what is that one about? And I, you know, I think think we covered this too earlier. It's just really that sense of being able to walk into situ. Actually something I just read today. This is the best way to release right here. Energy magic, right? As you breathe in, think I desire. And then whatever your desire is, maybe I desire that this interview really creates an amazing connection. Allow the desire to fill your body and emotions as much as possible. Hold your breath along with all the energy of your desire. And then breathe out thinking, I let go of attachment to this desire. Mm -hmm. So doing that again, that's I desire whatever your desire is. As you inhale, allowing this to fill your body and emotions as much as possible, holding your breath for just a second, thinking of all that energy of what you desire, and then breathing out thinking, I let go of attachment to this desire. This really helps our nervous system calm down. Again, I think that's more the advanced breath work. The 101 of that would be inhale confidence, exhale doubts. Yeah. Inhale confidence, exhale doubts. And the more you can release that nervous energy as you release the outcome of trying to force things, mm-hmm. just the more the inside nervous system really gets the message that you're safe, you're well, and it becomes so much easier. And I know it's a whole nother time we could talk about chakras, but all the chakras, yeah. you know, open up and balance more so that your area around your throat and around your heart can really share that value that you're trying to present. So that's one way to do it with releasing and maybe even putting that into your recovery plan. Just when you were talking there, I I felt someone at home went, but I don't know how to inhale confidence and release doubt. And I think that Mm -hmm. you don't need to label it. It's just the intention, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just, you know, really breathing in what serves you and letting go of the thoughts. Most of the people I work with, again, are often doing the practice of yoga, or they're familiar with meditation, um, or they're doing some other spiritual connection. And sometimes they want to find their own words with that. You're exactly right. Or, you know, they breathe in something that feels good and empowering, using that breath and breathe out any of that muck or inner critic or negativity. So good. And then that takes us into our recovery plan, which you kind of talked earlier about maybe you, you have a bath. I do my, um, energy cleansing thing. Um, sometimes I'll have a nap. Let's be real. (laughs) Absolutely. Right. And recovery, it, it can go into rituals like that, but it's just also really making sure too, that you have that support system around you because whatever, whenever you're trying to move forward, presenting yourself in the world of work, there is high risk and high stakes. And so not doing it on your own. I loved what you said at the top of the call about, you know, calling in your guides, how you do that in your routine and your ritual, but also calling in the physical forces here on earth and making sure that you have a team of people to really help make sure that you are taking good care of yourself. Because I can't think of many more things that do separate us from our best self than sitting in the hot seat and trying to talk about ourselves. And so who around you knows you well, or who can you invest in that can help get to know you well, that you can build trust with so that you can show up for these moments and walk away feeling more proud that you really represented yourself. And that's really part of the recovery plan. That's so good. I, those R's are super powerful. Thank you so much for sharing those. I know that I got a lot out of that and I know that our listener at home will love as well. I did think of another R, which maybe, I don't know why it didn't make the cut before. I'm sure you'll set me straight, but I just wanted to bring it up. Research. And you know what I was thinking was when you were talking about (laughs) rediscovering, you were talking about 
you kind of made me, it was about yourself, like almost rediscovering yourself and your mission. And that's something that I thought you've done during our discussion is you brought it back to mm -hmm. the people you serve, uh, the kind of work that you do. Like, so you're very aligned and that's really come through through mm -hmm. the whole hour that we've been talking. Mm -hmm. One thing I really wanted to mention is that researching who is interviewing you might help also because sometimes people will be given opportunities not mine. Everyone should be on my show if I if I invite you, but that aren't <laughs> in so line, amazing. That aren't in line with who they want to be or what they want to show up like. Like I was asked to be on somebody's uh, YouTube show once, and when I looked back on all the stuff that they had done, I, it wasn't a brand I wanted to be aligned with. And there's so no, glad you did that. No, I'm really glad you brought yeah. that up because actually I used to have that in there, and we've crossed it out. I say we when really the most amazing people on my team are, are my children, thankfully. Um, <laughs> recruiting, recruiting my interns and uh, um, to, to help me out. Um, but we cross that out because I think what also unfortunately happens, now you do, again, that's part of that rediscover is you, you do need to do um, looking into information, but so many times people are getting lost in the internet of all this information of what you should say in an interview, what you shouldn't say, and it just creates, you need to look a little bit, but I often say you need to do more internet, yeah. inner, like I-N-N-E-R, yeah. <laughs> and less internet when you prepare for an interview, um, you'll yeah. get stuck, swallowed down these rabbit holes that aren't really helpful. But you're right, Lauren, yeah. you need to make sure that you know who's going to be interviewing you and you have a right to ask if it's, if it's a team, is it a panel interview? Will there be behavioral yes. questions? Will there be case study questions? Yes. You know, the more you can find out without overly exercising that right, the better. Yes. And a great way to do that is to do some informational interviewing, you know, see who on LinkedIn you might be able to talk to at that company and ask for five to 10 minutes so that you can learn more about that position or so you can learn yeah. more about making sure that the culture fit is right for you. So, you yeah. so you're spot on. There's definitely a lot of things we need to do. I think it's just also the child like wonder in me hates that word research. And so that's yeah, another reason. Not it a very that. fun word. It <laughs> boring. I fell asleep when I was talking about it actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's true. But I guess, and uh, yeah, and, and that can just be done really quickly. But, you know, at the same time, when you look at all the other R's that you're doing, they do take almost a bigger priority because at least it, no matter where you'll be interviewed, you'll be representing yourself authentically, which is the main point. Mm. Yeah. All right. So listen, I do need to wrap this up. We didn't talk about, um, you know, your upgrade my interview method. Let's talk about that, you know, just quickly. I, and I can't help, but I really need to ask about the place that self-awareness, you know, has mm -hmm. in the kind of work that you do. Cause when you're talking about aligning your mindset, your body language and your energy, I guess a lot of what I was thinking about when you said that, or when I read that, I guess, was that, you know, self-awareness is critical. And I guess part of that could be kind of locked into the rediscover phase when you're preparing mm -hmm. for your interview. But yeah, what did you want to say on that? I think for me that knowing and, and working in areas and seeing, you know, I worked through the recession um, in our country and in employment centers and just mm -hmm. seeing you know, just how easy it is to get disconnected from who we really are when we're trying to get opportunities. And yes, there are a lot of things around survival, you know, we need to make sure happen while we're trying to move into opportunities and never leaving an opportunity without the, a plan is very important. But I just see so many people get stuck because that self-awareness piece wasn't there because they didn't realize that there was choices and that there are other methods to help them out so that these broken spots in the system and ways such as biases that really get in the way for some very qualified people not to get the chances that they deserve, yeah. we need more ways around that so that the playing field can be more fair. So what's in our control is ourselves. And like you said, that self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And since we're wrapping up, I was gonna share with you a, a poem 
uh, for, for me, I think helps describe a little bit more about the philosophy of UpgradeMyInterview.com. Yes. It's by, I don't know if you've heard this book, I Will Not Die an Unlived Life by Donna Markova. And I just want you to enjoy it because it's also, I hope, a little bit of inspiration for you, Lauren, because I can't thank you enough for all the amazing message that you put out into the world and the ways that you're stretching yourself. Um, there are women watching you. There are many of us following what you're doing. And I just want you to know that I think you already have what this point's going to tell you down, but maybe it might relight some fire as well. We all need it. Thank you. It says, I will not die an unlived life. I will not live in fear of falling or catching fire. I choose to inhabit my days to allow my living to open me, to make me less afraid more accessible, to loosen my heart until it becomes a wing, a torch, a promise. I choose to risk my significance, to live so that which came to me as seed goes to the next as blossom, and that which came to me as blossom goes on as fruit. I wow. love all those upgrades. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the link to that in the show notes as well. That gave me hella goosebumps. <laughs> That was so beautiful. And you know, it's funny, like, you know, for our listener at home, I don't really talk too much about my other business. I've got a promo that runs at the beginning of these conversations. These ones I tend to kind of, you know, it's more spiritual, I suppose. But, you know, I lost my job through COVID that I'd been with for almost seven years, my full-time job. And, uh, and then out of that, that's when I decided to start running my business again full-time. And that's where the afterlight actually grew out of that experience. And, you know, for a, for a full year, for whatever reason, I didn't do, I wouldn't do a Facebook live. Like I was just nervous and I didn't want to put myself in the spotlight. I just didn't, I wasn't ready. And then one day it was kind of like this poem. I just, I recognized that it was the only way that I was going to be able to do the work I came to do, I guess. So, you know, so I just want to encourage anyone and I know that you as well, like Shay, with all the work that you've done and all the growth that you've done and all the people that you help on a continuous basis that, you know, we don't start where we want to end. We all have to go through mm -hmm. these things. We all have to practice and we're all in it together, aren't we, Shay? Yes. Yes. And just the ways that we can help each other out are really limitless if we allow those doors to stay open. I totally agree. Yeah, I agree with that as well. So is there anything I didn't ask you? We kind of went all over the place, but we were guided to go there and that's what we did. So, you know, this is what, um, there are a lot of things that I'm going to put into the show notes for our listener at home. You know, some of the books that you mentioned, mm -hmm. and I'm going to see if I can find Serena talking about her ritual, for example. So that's kind of reminded. So, you know, is there anything that I didn't ask you though that you did want to bring up before we kind of wrapped up and how can people get a hold of you to find out more? Cause there might be someone at home going, you know what? I need help speaking my truth. I need help being ready for interviews. This is the way that I'm going to get my mission and my voice across. I think it's just that about that connection, just doing the things that you need to do so you can stay connected before during and after the interview. So no matter what happens and what the outcome is, you can get to your next moment and share your professional value with all that authentic ease and confidence. I just, I get so excited when I start seeing more and more people get, get, get to that. Um, it's just, it, it is, it's just kind of when you know what you, what you're doing, uh, like you said before, that it just gets easier and easier. Um, the universe just has its way. Um, another person I look up to a lot, Kristen Noel of um, Best Self Magazine, she says, when the world shifts, or when we shift, the world shifts. And I, I think that's so true. When you really make that decision that you want to move into a bigger opportunity, the support's going to come and help you. You just have to stay open to it. And as far as staying in touch with me, I, I send out a power boost, upgrade my interview power boost every month. Um, and I just fill it with all these free nuggets around mindset, body language, energy, all the things we talked about and different ways to shine in the hot seat. Um, I just love putting that together for people. So joining that list is, is a great way to stay connected. 
perfect. And I'll put a link to all that in the show notes as well as a link to your socials so that people can find out more. And, you know, thank you so much for your time and your generosity and, you know, sharing all that value and tips and tricks on how, you know, we can learn to take our business and our message further. Thank you so much. Go take that bath now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Let me cut some cords here. (laughs) Love you too. Love you so much. (laughs) Apparently you can't cut cords of love. That's what I, that's what I read. I don't know if that's true, but. (laughs) Right. And it's funny you mentioned that because I also think, um, you know, in all this work I want to do to help women to share their voice with such confidence and big driver being that my daughter, it's funny because I think the younger generation has this advantage with the, you know, the, the smart devices, the Googles and the Alexas, because that thing won't work unless, because she's a quite a quieter voice, unless she's like, Alexa, (laughs) give me the recipe for, (laughs) so I feel like they they have some advantages. So that's a good thing to see too, coming around the corner. (sighs) Yes. It's definitely fascinating to see how the world is going to evolve and change you know, with the younger generation, especially for those of us who have had to maybe learn the hard way and then we get to teach and they can avoid that because, yeah. Right, we're all getting used to video interviews, but she's going to have to get a hologram interview is what I'm hearing with artificial intelligence. It's just, it's going to keep going on and on. (laughs) Will you take care of yourself and get get to your amazing rest of your work day? I will see you again soon in some way, I'm sure. Thank you. Hi. Thanks so much for listening to the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave us a review where you listen to your podcast and share it with your friends. Thank you. New episodes every Thursday.